Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate you to the next level in your life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. The Bible says that with our mind we serve God. You would think that it would be with our bodies, right? You would think that it's me coming to church, dressing myself, saying hi. And, no, but the Bible says that with our mind we serve God. And I don't know about you, but there is such a fight to have the thoughts of Jesus. There's such a fight to believe and to stand in faith and to declare in faith like we did it tonight. Tonight we call those, all those wonderful ladies and we're saying, you know, we believe that our God is real. We believe that our God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He's in the business of miracles. But many times it's so easy to believe for someone else. Right? If you're not going through something, it's easy to believe that God can do a miracle in your life. But it's so hard to believe many times because we know ourselves. We know, we know what goes in our mind. We know our past. We know what we did yesterday. We know what we did today. And many times we think that God is so um, upset at us that he's mad because we haven't done things. And, and so that means that we just need to renew our mind and we need to think how he thinks. So for those people that we pray, raise your hand. Okay, we need to say it with a renewed mind. We need to discard every thought that is telling you that you are going to die. You need to discard every thought that is telling you that, no, you're not going to make it. God is not going to do it. But tonight we're going to be pulling down some strongholds. Tonight we're going to exercise, we're going to pull down, we're going to cast down, and we're going to anchor ourselves in believing what the word of God says. That if God says that he is a healer, then so be it. That if God says that he is in, 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 in the miracle business, then so be it. That if God says in his word, and his word is truth, if the word of God says that 2,000 years ago God so loved us that he sent his only son and he took every sickness, every disease, every condition, every issue, every sadness, he took it upon himself and he says that it's a done deal. But see, the battle is when, when we're... In a crowd of believers, right? Have you ever uh, been in such a need of faith and you wanted to believe something? So you went and you gathered. You did the right thing. You went and you grabbed yourself some people that believe like you. Because if you're standing for a miracle, we need people that believe stronger than I believe. I don't need someone to agree with me when my mind is playing tricks on me. I need someone who's going to believe with what the word of God says. And I need someone who's going to address me in my wrong thinking. So tonight we have to believe that the word of God is truth. And that we should not be afraid of facing the facts. We're not denying that you're, you have been uh, told that you have cancer. Faith is not saying, no, I don't have cancer, I don't have cancer, no. Faith is saying, you know what, the fact is that I've been told that my body is dealing with this cancer cells. That's the fact. But the truth of God is that my God is able to heal me. The truth of God is that we need to start speaking the word of God, not from our flesh point of view, not from our mind, but it has to be from our spirit. We need to believe, we need to declare. And I'm preaching to myself. We need to believe in spite of what we feel. We need to believe in spite of what we're, we're seeing. We need to believe in spite of what you're ex experiencing, especially if you're believing for healing. And I'm sure if you're dealing with chemo and you're dealing with all these things and you're standing, you're standing, you're believing, and then you come to church and then you feel strong and then you go back home, but then the pain is waiting for you. But then the voices are waiting for you. But then the sleepless nights are waiting for you. And they're telling you, no, that God is not going to heal you. Because if, if he was going to heal you, he would have done it already. You know, yesterday I was, um, yesterday was Tuesday, right? See, I'm lost. It's already miracle. Miracle March. Uh, 
I passed by like seven times by that wall. And I told the Lord, Lord, I am believing. I'm, gonna, I'm going to throw away every doubt. I'm going to throw away any bit of unbelief because I want to believe that you are able to do everything that people are asking you there. And I read most of them. And they're not asking for a porch. They're not asking for a Louis Vuitton bag. If you have one, you can give me one. But they're not asking for that. They're asking for restoration in families. They're asking for kids to return back home. They're asking for their kids that are strung out in drugs that they'll be able to be delivered. They're asking that they will be sane in their mind. They're asking all the things that God wants to do for us. So when I read it, I was like, oh, my God, this is agreement. God is saying yes to all of these cards. Because we're not asking God. We're not asking for things that it's out of, out of our reach that we can do. Whatever we can do, we're going to do it. But all those things is out of our reach. I can't reach my child. I can't fix myself. I can't heal myself. I cannot restore my family. I cannot do this. Yeah, you can, but there's one who can. There's truly one who can. Not only is he able, but are we able to align with him? Are we able to agree with what he's saying? So we're going to go into this mind construction. I told the Lord, because I, I wanted to preach a happy message, you know. I was like, why can't I preach like happy thoughts, you know, like happy feet? Something nice, something that has a punch. You know, so when you talk about like mind renewal, like your identity, people are like, oh, I already heard it. Another message about identity, and you're still in the same hole, and we're still eating crumbs, right? And may I be honest with you, it even has come out of my mouth. Another message about my renewal. I believe that God wants us to get a grasp of who he is and his word. And we have everything that it takes. Last week I told you that we are commanded, commanded. The word is not a suggestion. We are commanded to fix our eyes on Jesus. We are commanded to do that. But many times we feel it as a suggestion. Like, do you know how many times God asked me, like, fix your eyes on me? And I'm like, everywhere. Distracted. Very quiet in this Episcopalian church. <laughs> Let's go to Second Corinthians because we we're going to go in the word, right? It's only the word that's going to be able to deliver us. So today, tonight we're going to pull down strongholds. That's what we're doing. We're going to leave this, this room light. Tonight in this floor, there's going to be so many lies on the floor. So many things that we have believed to be truth in our lives. Because we're still believing like we used to believe. Well, the Bible says that we are new creations, right? The moment that you and I accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, do you know that that's the moment the Bible says that we just automatically, the moment that you believe in God, you confess and you say, Lord, come into my heart, be my Lord. Do you know that that's the moment you and I get translated from one kingdom to another? That's trippy, huh? It says translator. Translated, it, 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 it means conveyed. It's like you're in a conveyor and they're like, you, there's nothing, you're not doing anything. He just planted you from this kingdom into another kingdom. The Bible also says, and you can go there, I'm going to give you a few scriptures. Proverbs 4.23, and we know this, we know this scripture, right? We know that we have to guard our hearts with all diligence because out of it springs the issues of life, right? Sometimes we, we don't even know what, where is the heart anyways. Is my heart, my mind, my emotions? I love what the next, I'm going to read it in the next uh, translations. The GNT says this, be careful how you think. This is the same scripture. Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by what? You know, outside we may look good because you know, we might be in shape and we're proud of it because 
we're being shaped by what we eat or we're being shaped by our exercises, whatever, right? And so people are just blessed with genes, you know? They're just blessed, right? But we're actually being shaped. See, all of us here could come here tonight and look great, or you could be sitting there and look awesome, like amazing hair. I don't know, guys, I don't know what you guys like, a nice beard, I don't know. I don't know what's cool for you guys. For women, we love hair, we love makeup, skin, shoes, you know. And in the outside, it looks like we're in pretty good shape. It looks like we have it all together. We even know how to put on a smile. We even know how to say praise the Lord. We even know how to say amen, so be it. But inside, inside we're so out of shape. Because the thoughts that we are thinking and what's inside our mind hasn't been renewed. It took me years to believe that I had issues. I mean, I knew I had issues. But some issues I was like, ah, no, I don't think so, God. I don't agree with you. The more he pointed out some issues in my life, I'm like, mm -mm, that looks pretty good to me. We could be so deceived because our thoughts, we, 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 that's what we, we do. That's what shaped us. That's what we, are, we need to guard our thoughts. Sometimes we think that being diligent with their heart means, you know, we're going to push people out and other people did me wrong. So, you know what, I'm going to stay away from them. I'm guarding my heart. Praise Jesus. No, no, you're not guarding your heart. You're doing the opposite. So I believe that tonight we're going to have such freedom. I believe that tonight at the end of the service, we're going to do a dance. Seriously. I'm believing that tonight is going to mark a new day, a new, a new season in our lives and how we see Jesus. I believe that tonight is going to mark, is going to be written in your book of your own life. That tonight, Elevate chose to believe God. That tonight, we decided to believe what the word of God says. And we decided to go forward with what God has asked us to do and to stand for righteousness. What is to stand for righteousness? Righteousness is whatever pleases our Father. And you know what pleases Him when we believe Him? You know, when you're a little girl and you believe everything that your daddy tells you? My dad lied a lot when he was, <laughs> he's here. He told me he went to the moon. And I think I told you that story. He told me, I was five years old, and he says, I went to the moon. He worked for construction, and he got all these rocks, and they were shiny. And he said, look what I got you. <laughs> and I was like, you went to the moon? He said, I went to the moon. And I said, how did you do it? And he said, this guy came. You see, you're like, you're like a kid, right? You're like, this guy came, and I flew it, and they took me. And then I thought of you, and these two rocks are for you. And I was like, my dad went to the moon. They were precious for me. And I never questioned what he told me. He went to the moon. If he said he went to the moon, he went to the moon. That's a childlike faith, huh? And then when I was seven years old or eight years old, my dad departed because he needed to come here. He left the family so he can provide for our family. And I remember that I used to get those rocks. This is what I have from my dad. He went to the moon. And I was already eight. I was so gullible. I was so, like, I don't want to say innocent because that's beyond innocence. I tried to sell a rock. <laughs> I actually sold it to my friend. I needed money. And I said, you know what? I have rocks from the moon. He's like, you do? Yes. <laughs> my dad went to the moon. How did your dad went, go to the moon? Well, there was a kite, the wind. <laughs> In the favor of God. No, my dad was an atheist, like an agnostic, so it was the favor of whatever. He used to believe in so many things. And I sold the rock. And I was so excited. I was like, I got money. It wasn't much, but I got it. I kept one rock because I'm like, okay, I still need to keep because this is from the moon. So, And I remember coming home from school, and I was in trouble. The parents were there. 
with the rock. I was like, you guys want another rock? No, I only have two. The other one's mine. And they said, you know, your daughter, they, they're like, your daughter's a liar. She's selling this rock. And I was crying there. No, my dad went to the moon. They're like, how did you go to the moon? There was a kite and the wind. <laughs> and the forces of nature took him. And then he, no one can convince me otherwise. Do you understand? Even then, the people were telling me, you're a liar. And, you know, and I didn't believe it. Okay, but that's a silly lie. That was, he was trying to be cute, right? But see, we, this is our heavenly father. He's telling you, I am for you. I have healed you. I have delivered you. I have restored you. I have done it. And it's already done once and for all. You have to do is come in agreement into this new kingdom and stand with me and believe no matter what the enemy tells you. And that we're so mesmerized about our heavenly father, like mesmerized. No, he told me the word of God is truth. This is whatever it says here from page one. Of Genesis to the last one, Revelation, is that this is the truth of God. This is the truth of God. So if it's not there, it's not for me. But how many times do we live like that, right? We don't live like that many times. I'm going to tell you why. Okay, let's go to our first scripture. 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 6. Quickly, because time is flying. For though we walk in the flesh... We walk in the flesh, right? We live here. We live on this beautiful tent that we have. It says, we do not war, we do not war according to, this, to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are what? Are what? Not carnal. But mighty in what? In you or in God? For what? Casting down arguments. The, the King James is casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of what? It says that you and I have been given weapons. You know, we talk about the armor of God, right? Like, I think years ago I did this series on the armor of God. I even just stopped like a soldier. But then we forget what we have. Do you know how many times, there's times in my life that I have to repeat at least 20 times to remind myself, no, Virginia, this is who you are in Jesus. And I fear a stronghold. What is a stronghold? What's a stronghold? Do you know what a stronghold is? Stronghold is something, it's just something that we have become a belief system that we have, that you and I, we created this belief that maybe we got it from our parents. I don't know, but we have, it, it's, it's a very strong feeling emotion it's, it's it has become your reality this is why you believe in no one moves you so it's not just a strong and it's strong but it's get, it has a hold of you and then when we come to Jesus let's see if I can do this when we come to Jesus I feel your strongholds are like pillars it's, it's like our, our our foundation our foundation needs to be when we come to the Lord now our foundation needs to be with Christ right so I figure When we come to Jesus, or when I came to Jesus, because we're, we're talking mine under construction, right? I was going to get a tool bell and all that, but, you know, didn't have the chance. Maybe next week. So mine under construction. So to me, it's like construction means you, you constantly a continual renewal of our mind, a continual construction. That means we never arrived. But when I came to the Lord, I already had a lot of foundation in me. There were a lot of strongholds. There were a lot of things that I believed to be true. So now I, can you see that they're broken? I just put them back together. Because I, many times we're broken. Whatever we believe, if it's not based on Jesus, if it's not based on the word of God, it's broken. It's, it's, it's twisted. It's distorted. So what we do is we come to God. Can somebody hold this for me here? I want you to hold this for me. Thank you. You can hold that there. And then maybe I need one, one other person. Okay. So strongholds are like pillars. This is what I believe. This is what I believe about 
rejection or could be acceptance because we only deal with rejection in the kingdom of darkness. Because when we come to the kingdom of life, when we come to Jesus, it's all about acceptance, right? And let's say here it's I have an issue with people, trusting, relation. Maybe this is a, my, my trust issue. So I already know how I feel about trust. Trust no one. When you're little, if people let you down, it's like, you know what? I'm, I'm never going to let nobody let me down. So who do you rely on? Me. And then along the way, you grow up, and then it just, things happen, and it's just, this is getting stronger because, oh, my God, someone is just validating how you feel. So this is becomes your truth. And I don't know, another one. Choose another one. Something that could be a twisted in our mind. No, please, not too many people at the same time. What? Fear. Let's go to fear. Right? So this is fear. So I come like that. Okay, so pretend this is, this is my foundation. This is me. This is Virginia. I come to the Lord. Okay, he's broken. But I, hey, I never thought I was broken. So I will do whatever to make it look good. To this one, I even use a clear tape. I'm going to let no one know that I'm a mess inside. But see, sometimes we don't know that we're a mess, right? But so th there, there were my beliefs, th there, were my, there were my foundation, that, that was my house, my here, the construction, this is what was holding my heart because it says, be careful how you think because what? You will be shaped out of it. But see, now I come to Jesus. Well, praise the Lord, now I come to Jesus. I come to Jesus, so you know what? I want to get better. I know I'm messed up over there. I know that. I, I know how I feel about people rejecting me. But you know what? I'm just going to put a, lot of, a, a little bit of, of Jesus on my rejection. I know how I feel about trust. I know that people always let you down. You know, people are people. They let you down. Christians will let you down. The pastor will let you down. You leaders will let you down. But the Bible now says that I need to love people. So, hey, I'm just going to put a little bit of Jesus in my trust issue. Now I have fear. He has always had a hold in my life. But now, hey, I used to have depression. I used to have panic disorders. I used to have anxiety. I used to have worry. You name it, I had it. And I even got the T-shirt. My husband always says that. So, but what am I going to do? I don't want to deal with it. Because I'm so fearful. I, I'm so fearful of things in my life. So what do I do? I'm just going to get a little bit of Jesus. And I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it on my foundation. But see, the more we continue... And then we continue, and then you're going you're gonna to encounter issues in your life. God has called us to, to be a body of Christ. God has called us to assemble each other and to be there for one another. He even says, carry each other's burdens. Who wants to carry each other's burden? No, when you're faulty. No, when I have problems with rejection. No, when I have problems with trust. No, when I have fear. I can't carry your own thing because I can't even deal with my own crap. And I'm like, praise the Lord, almighty, I am free. But see this, this will never make it. We will never make it. Because life is life and we're going to encounter things. We're going to encounter rejection. People are going to reject us. Even Jesus says, hey, you're going to go out and people are going to mistreat you. They're going to use you. So if you are like faulty in that area, this is not going to hold you. Our foundation, our beliefs should be so unshakable that no matter what we encounter or what things are happening outside, you can't be moved. So look, if this gets too much, you know, thank you, Candy. If this gets too much, you know how easy it is to be, to be broken? I'm just pretending to be whole. I'm just pretending to have it all together. But look, all I have to do is look, what am I, I going to do if I can't do it?
But then I go to a prayer meeting. I better put myself together. <laughs> Let me a little bit of Jesus. Give it to me. Oh, my gosh. I better pray at meeting. They're talking about my renewal. Hold it. Hold it. Even if it hurts you, hold it. Hold it hard. You know what? If I get a little bit of extra scriptures for tonight. No, mm-mm. no, 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 no. I, you know, I'm renewing my mind. Oh, Jesus, praise God. <sighs> Thank you. You may sit down. Now I'm going to tell you, you can put it down. I'm going to tell you why I did that. Because the Bible didn't say repair it. It didn't say repair. I want to repair my rejection. And believe me, do you know that? Can I be honest with you? One of the issues that I found out years, me walking with the Lord, as long as I continue to renew my mind, continue to renew my mind, and all of a sudden, you know, God tells me, hey, you remember that plank that you think is really safe there? One, the one that has clear tape? Yes, that one. Do you know that you're still dealing with rejection? Do you know that you're still being moved by rejection, Virginia? So whatever that foundation is faulty, and you're like, but how do I get, how do I, how do I, how do I renew my mind? How do I, how do I construct the part? Then you go back to the word. It says pulling down strongholds. And it says casting down, because that's my stronghold. Casting down what? Arguments in every vain imagination. Do you know what the word cast down means? It means to demolish. It means to destroy it. It says, you know, you destroy every vain imagination because now you're living in Jesus. Because we're talking to Christians, right? We're talking about the renewal of the mind. And if you're new in the Lord, hey, great news. You can start great today. Because you can start with a new foundation knowing that, hey, according to God, I am a new creation. According to God, I can renew my mind. According to God, I am able. He, I have been given weapons. And that weapon is that I pull down every stronghold. God is not going to pull it down for you. He says, you pull it down. That's the alarm for pulling it down right now. He says, cast down every vain imagination. He says, demolish do you know the word imagination? The word imagination comes from the, from, the, from the word imagine. So is it real if you're imagining something? So it's not real, right? And the word imagine comes from the, the word imagine. Out of it comes the word image. So we're being bombarded with those, all these images in our minds. I mean, for those millennials, I don't think you guys know this, but remember those little, like, you could see things that was like binoculars? What were they called? The view master. And then they're, like, mesmerizing. You just see pictures. You show it to the other kids, they're like, what is that? What does that do? It gives you new eyes. But it's just, it's just pictures. It's just images. <laughs> How many images go into your head in a day? You know that I thought it's an image. When I say the word rejection, I don't, I don't see my mind rejection. No, I see someone pushing me away. The moment I say rejection, an image. So you and I are being tormented by images. Images that might have taken place, right? They were at some point, maybe the rejection was real, but now we are in Jesus Christ and now we need to demolish and we need to admit, you know how I feel about people, you know how I feel about acceptance. That needs to be reconstructed. I need to, I need to align myself, I need to get it together, and I need to believe that I am accepted in Jesus Christ. I tell you that we will be some happy Christians. We need to cast it. We need to demolish. We need to grab our hammer. 
and you need to start with one issue. If you're asking right now, if when I said an image that has been tormenting you, think about the image. What is it that has come to steal your joy, kill your joy, try to destroy you, try to put you in a corner, try to tell you that you're not going to make it, try to tell you that God is a liar, try to tell you all of these things. What is that image? Well, the Bible said destroy it. Well, how do you destroy that, that image? How? You need to recognize that that image is distorted. Because now I don't live, I don't live in my past. I don't live in the kingdom of darkness. I am not of this world. I live in the world, but I'm not of this world according to the kingdom of God. Now I live in the kingdom of light. Now I am a new creation. That, a new creation, that means that I have a new nature. And now I just need to exercise that nature. I need to learn how to live in that nature. I need to apply the word of God. It needs to be truth in my life. You need to grab a scripture. If you deal with rejection or whatever issue you have that has become a stronghold in your life, you grab one or two scriptures and then you eat that scripture over and over and over and over until it becomes comes you how do I know that because years ago I couldn't see myself in a mirror because I used to think that I was the, mo the most ugly person that God had created in the universe I didn't own any mirrors in my house the ones that come with the apartment oh well I couldn't do much And I really believed that I was so ugly that I couldn't see myself in a mirror. I used to walk around, and, the, and God was, was showing it to me. I used to walk around, and when I would have a conversation with somebody, I would, I, I would say, like, I don't know how many times, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, for everything, I'm sorry. I wanted to be loved. I wanted to be accepted. But that was, that was what came out of my mouth, like, I'm sorry. They were not saying anything. I'm sorry. Like every other sentence was, I'm sorry. And I couldn't see myself in a mirror. But then I'm listening and they're saying that, no, I can pull down strongholds. Okay, this, Virginia, whatever you believe that you're so ugly, that comes from a place that I don't know what happened to you. And we're not going to go into that. But, hey, you are now created in the image of God. And he doesn't make mistakes. If there's only beauty. You might not see it, but there is beauty inside of you. And then you grab a scripture. And I grab the scripture where it says that we are his masterpiece. And I will say it over and over. I am his masterpiece. I am one of a kind. You know, in the moment, I will hate it to be one of a kind. I want to be like everybody else. I'm one of a kind. And I was created and I was designed to do good works for heaven. But I am his masterpiece. I am his masterpiece. And at that moment, I felt like a piece of something. Being honest, right? So how do you get rid of, how do you pull down, how do you cast down? You grab the word of God, one scripture, one. And then you say it a thousand times. When that thought comes, you can stop a thought. We can stop it. Can you put the scripture again, please? Okay, no, praise God. Okay, let me go back to my notes. It says, pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. How do, you, how do we get rid of those images? If those images, if that thought is coming and it's telling you, it's, it's putting itself, it's taking the place of God. Because this thought or this image or this thing or this issue wants to take the the place of God in your life. That's what he wants to do. He says that it exalts itself against the knowledge of what you already know about God. So the devil comes and tells you, you know what, you're going to die. But wait a minute, what do I know about God? I know that God heals. Okay, that's what I know. But this image is showing me that I'm going to die. Have you ever met people that when they were little, their, their parents die young? And now they're, they're raising their children, and there's a thought that comes, that image that comes when their mother or, daughter, uh, or mother or father die. And then now they think that 
hey, I might die young too. I met a lot of people like that. Or you grew up and you said, I'm never going to be like my dad. I'm never going to be like my mom because you have an image. But now you're a grown up. You have your own family. But all of a sudden you see, oh, there are some images. And they come and they play and they replay. Now you, you, what you're doing is you're creating. You're now making a solid foundation of how you believe about your mom or your dad. And now not only do you hate who they were, but now you hate yourself. You're like, I became what I hated the most. Right? You see, we have to be careful. We have to be careful what place in our mind. We have to be careful. If I'm, if I still tied in, in things that happened to me now and I still tied them into 10 years ago, 5 years ago, okay, that means that's a faulty foundation. I have a faulty foundation, but that's okay because God wants to reconstruct our mind. He wants us to do it every single day. He has given us every weapon. We have every tool. We have faith. We have Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit. We have everything. But I just want pixie dust. Right? I want to go to Jerusalem. Is there pixie dust? Can I buy it? Can I swallow it? Can I rub it? So I become this... Mighty woman of God. Now see, you and I, you and I are able to pull down strongholds. You and I, you and I with the word of God, we're able not only to pull down every stronghold, but we're able to cast to destroy every imagination, every conflict that is trying to exalt itself against the knowledge of what you and I know about my God. So then you have, to, you have to ask yourself, you have to check yourself, you have to, uh, you have to ask yourself, well, what do I believe? What do I know about God? That's why we need the word of God, right? What do I know about God? I know that God is good. I know that God is a restorer. I know that God is a healer. I know that God is a deliverer. I know that God is the way maker. I know that he's the only way. I know that he's into miracles. I know that everything that is good comes from him. Okay, that's what you know. And that's how you fight. You need to know who he is. So when this image is keep on clicking, you no, 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 no. That's not going to exalt. This is who my God is. You know that image that is telling you that you're not going to be healed from cancer? No, you, you say, oh, no. No, my God is a healer. My Jesus took every cell, cancerous cell, upon himself 2,000 years ago. So therefore, I am healed. And I'm just waiting for my body to agree with what my spirit already knows. It takes faith to do that. It takes a renewed mind to do that because I'm sure we, it's easy to say for someone who's suffering. But you don't know what they feel. You don't know if they're in pain. But that's why you yourself, that's what he says, you pull down the strongholds. You cast down the vain imaginations. So tonight I want you to cast down, destroy that lie. Destroy it, demolish it. And, and grab the truth of God and what does God say about that issue? What does God say about that image? And now you replay that image over and over, over and over, and over and over. I never forget one, when one morning I woke up and I always say it because God always brings me there. So when I hit places in my life that are so hard to believe, God says, if I deliver you then, I'm going to deliver you now. Oh, no, but God did it then. Shouldn't I be more grown up? No, he will deliver you then. He's going to deliver you now and he's going to continue to deliver you until he comes back to get us. So I always remember the morning that I got up and I, then I, for the first time in my life, I look at myself in the mirror. And this is for me remembering being as a little girl. And now I'm, a, I'm in my 20s. Late 20s. And then I remember looking at a mirror. And for the first time, I, I like something that I had. It's like, my nose is not that bad. And you know how awesome God is that my children have always loved my nose? Isn't it funny? Alexis always said, I want your nose as a little girl. I don't want my nose. It's ugly. No. <laughs> I wouldn't tell her, you don't want this nose, baby. You don't want this nose. 
that was before me being renewed. I was like, don't get this nose. But then you're able to see, like, it's not that my nose is beautiful, but that you're able to like your nose. You know what? I'm not that bad looking. I can live with this nose. If I get money, I can fix it. But you know what? I can live with this nose. And then you start seeing yourself, like, and the more you continue to replace the image. And then instead of replacing those imaginations and images that are not uh, according to the word of God, then we start playing images, the image that we have in Jesus Christ. No, I am a masterpiece. Whatever your issue, whatever your struggle, for, that's how you replace it. That's how you do it. And you do it a thousand times. If you have to do it, you say it in your head. You say it out of your mouth until it becomes you. Now the problem is like somebody get me down. I believe I'm very good looking. You know what I mean? No, just kidding. I'm teasing. Do not look at me like, oh, my God, no. But it's nice to know that you're in your 40s and you like yourself. That you spent all your single years, your double digits. My daughter said when she turned 10, she's like, I'm double digits. I spent my teenage year hating myself, trying to disfigure myself, most of my 20s, with thoughts that would consume me. You know, there's all these issues that we're still working on, right? But, but then what my next one? It says, in bringing every thought into what? Captivity. So that means, I'm like, how come God didn't say, how about we kill every thought? How about don't we just kill them? No, because thoughts are going to come. Just because they come, that doesn't mean we have to accept them. So tonight, you know what we're doing? Tonight, I want you to get uh, some handcuffs, and we're going to go captivate some thoughts that have been loosed in your mind. We're going to send them to prison. We're going to send them to jail. What does it say? And captivate every thought, every thought that is coming and is arguing who God is in our lives and what he can do in our lives. You and I can captivate them. That means we can put them in jail. With no possibility of what? Parole. No, they're not, because they're going to, they're captive. That means they're still in your head. Like here and there, I feel like rejection comes like, Ugh, and then you're like, you feel it? Okay, but the, I don't have to accept it. I have to captivate that. Oh, I know that thought. That's the root of rejection. It's coming to knock the door. I think somehow someone got him loose. What do I have to do? It's, it's just captivate your thoughts. That means that you and I are in control of our thoughts. I control them. They don't control me. But do you know how many times I have allowed my thoughts to control me? I don't even have enough fingers to tell you. But you and I can captivate every thought. We don't have to be afraid of our thoughts. Do you know I'm a thinker? Is there any thinkers in the house? I'm an analyzer, a digester, a forensic. I want to know how it happened, how many milliliters, and what they, you know what I mean? When it comes to a problem, oh, I need to know details. So people that are analyzers, God is not saying like, hey, I don't want you to think. No, he says, I want you to, if thoughts are, are not aligning with me, all you need to do is captivate them. Just put him in jail. Put him in jail. Because he wants you to know that we are, we are the ones in charge of our flesh. We are in charge of our emotions. We can be in charge of our feelings. No one can make us sad. But do you know how many times I've been sad because someone says something or did something? That means I have allowed those thoughts. Maybe they requested a hearing and I went to hear whatever they had to say. Maybe they were saying, I change, I change. You know your thoughts? Have I renewed your mind? I won't see myself like that. But no, you're still thinking the same way. But there's hope. Tonight there's hope. You know, I, I am reminded of the, the you know, what the, what the Bible says. There's so, so many, just a little bit, that the Bible says about, about the devil. 
You know why the devil comes into it plays with our minds? Because where is it, the scripture? I think I gave it to you guys. I don't know if it's an Isaiah. Did I give you an Isaiah scripture? Uh, to our media team. Yes, I did. This is what it says about the devil. And he's talking about Lucifer. This is for you have said, this is what the devil thought. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation of the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high God. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the deepest, to the lowest depths of the pit. All he wanted to do, he wanted to always be above God. So you know what? He tried, right? He took a bunch of angels with him, but he tried. But what happened to him? He was cast down to the lowest pit. So he can't take that place. But what he's trying to do is he wants to take that place, what you know about God, and he wants to exalt himself in your thoughts. That's what he wants. Because he says, every thought that exalts itself against what? The knowledge of God. That's, 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 that's the entrance for him. If I can make this problem look bigger than, than God, then I got these kids. They're not going to believe 100%. If I can convince you that God won't heal you, he is trying to be above our God because our God is a healer. If he's saying that you're never going to be restored, your kids are never going to, what does the word have to say about that? We know that God loves the prodigal son, he loves, he, he, even when we depart, he's waiting for us to return. So their return is secure in Jesus. It's secure in Jesus. It's just not if they come, it's when they come. And he's able to save us. He's able to restore us. He's able to deliver us. He's able to heal us. Listen to this. You have to say, my God is able to heal me. My God is able to restore me. My God is able to deliver me. My God is able to save me. That is my God. That's what I know about my God. So when we encounter torment in our mind, when we encounter something that's playing over and over, then that's what we remind No. I'm not going to allow this situation. I'm not going to allow this image. I'm not going to allow this thought to be bigger, to take a place of my God because my God is greater and he is able. If today's message impacted you in any way and you would like to help us spread the gospel to others by giving a financial gift, please text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed as yours was today.